Well, good morning and welcome back to GP Outdoors. It's spring, rolling into summer, and now's the time everybody's looking at lawn mowers. Belly mower or finish mower? It's a big decision. Stick around. Cheers. So usually around this time of the year last year, as well as again this year, I get dozens of comments and questions from folks about the type of mower they think is right for them for their tractor. Now, as you guys know, I'm no expert by any means, and as you know, I bought a finished mower, but I get a lot of questions between, you know, why I didn't buy a belly mower and why I bought the finished mower or the differences between them. So I can give you my views on it and hopefully it might help you to make a decision. So let's talk about a couple of the differences, at least the differences I see in them. Number one, if you've got a belly mower under the tractor, the belly mower is sitting under you and it follows the footprint of the tractor. And it does it much better when you think about it than a finish mower would. If you have property where you're cutting grass around a lot of obstacles, maybe trees, you'll know that with the belly mower, when you go around the circumference of that tree, the mower follows in tight around the circumference. So you can usually whip around it once and you're done. With the rear finish mower, you've got a stationary connection to your three point. So it's not like a fifth wheel or anything. So when you're turning the tractor to the left, for example, your finish mower is swinging out to the right. It doesn't follow the tractor in as tight as a radius. So you end up, if you're going around trees, for example, you're gonna have to go by it two or three times to catch all sides. Because as you're turning the tractor tight around the circumference of the tree, your finish mower is swinging out away from the tree. So that's one important difference. I think another thing that you may want to consider is the way the mower discharges and the quality of cut. I've had this finish mower now for two seasons. Every time I cut it, it does a great job of dispersing the grass clippings in a wide pattern behind the tractor. I never get windrows, no matter how high I've cut the grass. It always cuts it evenly, and I've never had to go over a section of grass to recut strips that didn't get cut the first time. There's three blades under the 60 inch, and it seems to do a great job. The big thing for me is that it disperses it, and I don't get windrows. As you'll see in the pictures above, the acreage you're looking at was in fact cut yesterday with a belly mower. Now, in all fairness, it was cut with a belly mower on a large garden tractor, or what's still considered a garden tractor at its size. But either way, it's a belly mower, and they're all very similar. You'll notice that it's got a side discharge, and you'll see that even though the grass wasn't really high, it still leaves windrows out the side of that belly mower. And that's similar for any tractor video you see. If you watch anyone using a belly mower on a tractor, uh, compact or subcompact, you'll probably find that if they're cutting high grass, you get that same effect shoots it out the side, leaves a big windrow or clumps of grass out the side. You don't get that with the finish mower, at least I haven't yet. So this field that I just showed you or I showed you earlier was cut with the belly mower yesterday. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my finish mower, drop it to the same height, and I'm going to do the area beside the field because it's at the same height, same type of grass. Let's see how she does.
So hopefully you folks can see the difference with the sunlight, but basically same field, belly mower with the windrows and uneven cuts, finish mower, no windrows anywhere, no uneven cuts. So here's what I think is one of the biggest differentiators between the belly and the finish that I needed. As you know on the property, I've got a lot of rolling and steep undulations throughout the grass. Uh, not really gentle slopes by any means in too many spots, but usually pretty steep, pretty quick drops and those kind of things and really barely any flat land at all. What I like about this finish mower is that the top link and the two lower control arms are connected to fluctuating brackets. So this finish mower is able to follow the slopes and the undulations of the property far better than a belly mower can. It's sitting on these four wheels, it sits off on the three point and it follows along behind the tractor and follows the slopes of the land far better, giving me a nice even cut across those slopes. The belly mower on the other hand is sitting underneath the deck of the tractor and there might be a little bit of give on those brackets that it's hanging from, but generally speaking there's nowhere near as much as there is on the finish and it's largely guided by where the rear and the front axle are on the tractor. So as the tractor dips or raises, that belly mower is going to only go so far as it goes up and over slopes. Far better cut than I ever had before, much cleaner and I go by it on one pass. So a question I often get from people is how well that finish mower works in really high, tall grass. And I got to be honest, I never let my grass get too high, you know, maybe seven, eight inches at the worst. But what I wanted to do today, because I got the question again a couple of times this week, is I headed off down the concession, found one of my neighbors who happens to have a patch of his area or his acreage where he hasn't mowed it yet, and it's up at least a foot or more. And it's pretty thick in some areas. So of course he was more than happy to let me take the finish mower out and maybe cut that for him. So if you stick around, we're going to head down the concession and we're going to give this thing a shot in really tall, thick grass. Stick around.
Well, certainly not anything I'd call a finish cut, but then again, we are cutting 24, 26 inch grass. Cut it down okay. Left a lot of uh, grass thrown out the back, but it did the job. Another important feature I loved about this finish mower, which I couldn't do with my old belly mower, is on this property, you know I've got a lot of treed areas and I've got grass that goes under a lot of trees and overhang. And with a belly mower, you can't get underneath, deep inside and underneath those trees. But with the finish mower, I'm able to back it up right up underneath those trees and get all those areas done in one pass. Okay, so we're back in the shed. I apologize, a lot of wind today, so I did most of my audio here in the shed, just to try to minimize it on your ears. Uh, nice thing about wind at this time of the year though is black flies can't get me, which is why you didn't see me with netting today. I hope the video was helpful and answered a lot of the questions I've been getting from folks. Buying a mower is a big decision, it's a lot of money. Uh, but I think largely in my non-expert opinion, the type of property you have is going to largely contribute to your decision as to which mower is right for you. Um, and hopefully today's video has helped you out a little bit. If you're just cutting grass, uh, and all you want is a really nice finish cut on whatever acreage or property you have, probably your belly or your finish are things you're going to want to consider. If you've got property where you have grass in some areas that you want to do in a nice finish, but you've also got thicket or brush or underbrush, that's when you might want to consider moving into a flail or a rotary. And as you know, last summer I did a number of different videos uh, using a flail mower, so you can see what that looks like and what that's all about if you wish. Otherwise, I uh, hope it's been helpful for you. Thanks a lot for sticking around today. If you like the channel, please click subscribe, hit the like button, and if you want to know when I'm posting videos, just click the little bell. Have a wonderful week with your families, and I'll see you again on the next one. Cheers.